Is this the finest e-scooter yet? Time to meet the brand new Mi Scooter 3, promising a lot of improvements over the past generations and supposed to be the best in its class. But is it? Let's inspect! Hey! <laughs> really nice to meet you, welcome back! My name is Michael and what we do here on the channel is to inspect cool tech with this being one of those super interesting devices, the Mi Scooter 3. That's by the way something really interesting to notice and to recognize because of the blue accent color. Uh, other than that, looks very similar to the previous generations. And this is one of the most popular urban scooters ever. So I think it's really interesting to figure out how Xiaomi managed to balance all that, staying leaders, adding some new innovations, uh, possibly listening to the feedback from their community, and also staying compliant with all the regulations in the different countries. And in this video I'm going to talk about all that, about my experience and uh, the performance after the last uh, two weeks of testing it. And if you do have some questions or probably some ideas or remarks, do comment below because I'm going to be collecting some good ideas about a follow-up video about using it after a few months. The best part is that with all the upgrades, the supply issues and everything crazy that happened in the past two years, the scooter is going to maintain very affordable price being between the One S and the Pro model with of course the best kind of technologies that 2021 can provide. Given its solid performance, huge variety of modifications and spare parts and the smartphone app maintenance, this is one of the best choices for a city scooter, doesn't matter if we talk about beginners or advanced users. The unboxing. It has been far better than the first generation. Very cool looking package, most of the important highlights noted. And of course, it is all well protected for safe transportation. Just like the rest of the Mi Scooters, you have to first mount a handlebar and then take care of the rest. Be very careful and very gentle because you don't want to damage the wires inside the tube before mounting. You also need those four screws. Well, you're given five just in case. And there's a wrench tool included. Very important is also to check the tire pressure, never let it go below 2 bars. Xiaomi actually recommends saying it around 3.5 bars and the maximum that the tire can handle is up to 4. If the tires are ok, you're gonna notice that the pressure is going to be fine in the long run, but you can still check it from time to time. If you feel that there's a decline, get a pump and make sure it's up to the requirements and there's an included nozzle extension in the pack. With the first generation of Miss Cooter, a common issue are the punctures caused by the friction between the inner tube and the tire due to insufficient pressure. While here Xiaomi use newer and better quality tires, I'd still pay extra attention to this component. The rest of the setup process involves a few other things, getting the battery to full, especially if you plan to ride the scooter, and removing the folios and the stamps. Also, when you power on the scooter, it will return beeps because you must go through the activation process. Download the Mi Home app as a starter in case you don't have it yet, follow the steps, watch a couple of boring videos till the end and accept the confirmation. If there are firmer upgrades to be done, you're going to get notified. For now, sounds like we're all set and we're gonna come back to the smartphone app a bit later. And now, important is to take a look at the tech highlights. Of course, we start with the new, more powerful motor, 300 watts with 600 watts in peak mode, 275 watt hour battery, which should supply you with range of up to 30 kilometers. Maximum speed is 25 kilometers per hour. Climbing angle ability up to 16 degrees. EABS and dual Patria disc brake. Improved folding mechanism. Registration place area on the fender. Maximum load up to 100 kilos. And total weight of the scooter is just below 13. Sounds like not too much has changed as compared to the predecessor but it's all about the details. I'm going to start with my feedback and we're going to cover first the construction because it's been one of the hot topics, mostly because of the broken hinges with Generation 1. But first the body, it's designed out of aerospace grade aluminium, which is at the same time lightweight and very durable. So yes, this is supposed to be a lot more durable than the predecessor. Uh, the other great update is really this folding mechanism uh, because the hinge is now upgraded a lot better I think much more reliable and folding is super easy just pull up pull up again and then you can fold together and you're all set the board is unfortunately with the same width 
I say unfortunately because I find this board a little too narrow for my food size, but it definitely is an advantage if you need a compact and a lightweight scooter. Next comes the motor, which is inside the front wheel. They say 600 watt peak power. It's a bit of marketing here involved. It's actually 300 watts, but when uh, there's a need for peak power, it's going up to 600. That's giving you pretty decent ride, no matter whether you're gonna be uphills or downhills. And I think in terms of performance, maximum speed is obviously 25 kilometers. Then we have a balance mode, echo mode, which is 20 kilometers per hour. This echo mode or dynamic mode, it feels as good as the acceleration with the sports mode on the first generation. So I would say, yeah, the performance here is really good. There's a little difference about how the throttle feels now and a bit different sound of the motor itself. It's in the front wheel and also represents the e-ABS brake. Very smooth and very efficient braking. Good moment to highlight the new rear brake because it now uses a dual pad system, much more reliable and should wear off a bit slower. I guess for these countries where legally required, like Germany, Xiaomi are going to figure out a way to split the operation of both in order to be compliant. If we add the battery to the equation, you will be pleasantly surprised. 275 watt hours, promise range for a 75 kilo rider with riding on flat surface and not accelerating too often, up to 30 kilometers. I managed to squeeze for 50% battery around 13 and a half kilometers and close to 26 until entirely empty. That was urban riding with bumps, some uphill riding and a lot of start-stop situation, mostly at the dynamic mode, but this is impressive achievement for my close to 90 kilo weight and if there was cruise control involved, it would have been easily able to achieve even more than that. There are a few more components I haven't thoroughly covered, like the mudguard, finally secured and less vulnerable, because Miskoro 1 has no protection and people are often breaking theirs. Much better lights, both on the front and the rear, here we have a bump up to 2 watts for the front light. And my favorite part, this awesome display, which even in direct sunlight is well visible. I guess controls are easy to remember, on the left this is the brake, right next to it the bell, on the right, acceleration lever. In the middle, the display with the button controls. Single press to start or stop the front light. Double press, switches between modes. Pedestrian mode, this is the boring one. Speed is up to 5 km per hour. The dynamic, up to 20. And the sports mode, going as fast as 25. At the time I recorded this video, still no way to unlock the speed limit. And sadly, again, due to regulations, the cross control option is not present, but even if we want it nowadays, that should go through a custom firmware which will void the warranty. I guess getting such firmwares is just a matter of time anyways. You know, while most of these components seem to be minor upgrades on top of what we already know for the Mi Scooter series, there are two keywords that describe the whole marketing strategy around Mi Scooter 3 – safety and reliability. Just look at the list. There are overcurrent protection, overcharging protection, undervoltage auto sleep protection, short circuit protection, even temperature protection, so it's among the safest scooters to ride in super hot and super humid areas. So, after covering all these strengths, let's talk about the possible drawbacks. And uh, first is the waterproof rating, it's still IP54, although Xiaomi did something about it and uh, that's about the cover of the display, because now it's in one piece. Speaking of rainy day and mud, this here, the battery cover at the bottom is a nightmare to clean. Likely the replacement options that we have from uh, Mi Scooter 1 are going to be compatible, I still cannot confirm this though. Since the dimensions are exactly the same as Mi Scooter 1, I think this device is not perfect for people that are taller than 1 meter and 80 centimeters. Last but not least, that's because of the regulations, no cruise control. So, who is this electric scooter for? It's perfect scooter for beginners or urban commuters, for advanced users, a great match in case you need something compliant with safety regulations, because Xiaomi have always been great at adhering them. If you have Mi Scooter 1, 1S or Pro, might be good upgrade only if you need some of the upgrades that we mentioned throughout this episode and care about the significantly improved safety features. If you come from a Mi Scooter clone or a white label, I think you're going to like a lot this one. 
So yeah, I think the best urban scooter just got better. It's definitely not a revolution, but a good evolution with some decent upgrades. And given the affordable price, the easy access to spare parts, accessories, and given the fact that so many people know how to repair this body, I think it's a very decent choice, especially if you combine it with a good smartphone app that gives you so much information. But it's really important to find out what you guys and girls think. Let me know in the comments below, would you go for the Mi Scooter 3 if you already own a Mi Scooter or you're only going to purchase it if that's going to be your first scooter ever. Anyhow, whatever you have to say, speak up in the comment section below the video. As usual, it's been a lot of researching and um, working prior to releasing this video, so it's going to be much appreciated if you can subscribe to the channel, use the links from the description below if you decide to purchase any of the goods that we've shown throughout this episode. And thank you so much for visiting me today. Wish you a fantastic day. See you soon. Bye.